Good morning. Welcome back to the Retirement Report. All right, we're talking about the science of investing, how to get the most out of your money with the least amount of risk. Remember when I talked about the whole financial plan and how it works, about getting finding out what your needed rate of return is and then putting your portfolio together around that? So an example would be, I know that I can look at the historical returns on a conservative portfolio, uh, 25% in equities, for instance, and I know I'm going to be somewhere in that neighborhood of 3 to 4%. If I want to go into a moderate portfolio, which could be anywhere from 40% stocks, 50% stocks, 60% stocks, all kind of fit in there, just a little tweaking. I know I'm going to come in based on, uh, at least I know what over the last 16 years, that's did about, that's done, excuse me, around 5% return average per year. A growth portfolio where I get more equities, 75%, for instance, that portfolio has done about 6% per year. Those are the kind of things we look at. A gr an aggressive growth, maybe about 7% per year. Now, that doesn't tell us, you know, these, these past returns, as, they, as we know, are no uh, guarantee of future results. But it's what, when we look at the returns relative to the S&P and we see how they've done over the last 15, 16 years, Okay, that's the best we're going to get to as, a, as a guiding principle in terms of what may happen over the next 10, 15 plus years. All right, so let's take a look at the slide with regard to the S&P. So these are actual returns, okay? So if we look at an S&P 500 index fund, uh, this is a Vanguard fund and what its returns it's had over the, from 2000 through 2015, and we look at a moderate uh, portfolio, a model uh, portfolio in fact, using these Dr. Fama's research, and we see the returns that would have provided over the same period of time, what we see, in fact, is the results do what we expected based on Dr. Markowitz's efficient frontier. We did, in fact, not only did we get less volatility, in fact, about half, or in, uh, we actually did even better than we expected, but the returns, we were just looking to get an equal return. We actually got an, a return that exceeded what the S&P did over that period. So this is very encouraging. Let's look at the next slide and I'll show you how this looks. What it means then basically is that, we're, that, that, that this science of investing does in fact work. This is a computer model showing another way to, this another way to look at it. And what it's doing is it's showing as long as there's that top line and the bottom line, the, the model is saying that 95% of the time we wanna, if we're hitting in that, you know, our returns, are in between those lines, then that portfolio is in fact working. And that's what it's showing us over that 20 year period that this in fact does work, all right? We're able to get the desired rate of return, get a market rate of return in other words, uh, less of course the costs uh, that are associated with it. And that's why costs are so important, minimizing those with that lower risk that we're looking to get. All right. So let's recap, let's recoup a little, let's recap rather, a little bit of what we've just talk, gone over. All right, so as I was talked about, you know, in the book, uh, we talk about, I ta told you about my, my uh, progression, if you will, evolution over time uh, with regard to what I learned about the markets and, how, and what I, how I learned about the science of investing over time and what really works. So here's what we're going to do, all right? If you'd like to have your portfolio analyzed, if you'd like to see how it does relative to the model portfolios, then all you need to do is be one of the first 10 callers to my office at 615-376-5325. I will help you also with a comprehensive financial plan at no charge, all right? That means a comprehensive financial plan. I'm gonna show you your financial future. I'm gonna show you based on what you're doing, what that's gonna look like you, for you 10 years, 15, 20 years down the road, all right? And in doing that, we're gonna determine what is the needed rate of return that you need on your investments to make sure you're able to attain your goals. And what is that gonna start with? Being able to attain and maintain your standard of living and quality of life no matter how long you might live other financial goals you might have in there, whether it's helping with the grandkids, whether it's doing something for your children, maybe doing some special trips or some things around, the house, whatever it is, whatever those financial goals are, we factor that in as well. Everything goes in there. We look at taxes and what impact that's gonna have. Inflation, we look at the impact that. All of that is in the report we do for you. And then I sit down and I go over that with you, all right, to show you what you're currently doing, what the risk potential is there in depth, 
uh, and this isn't just a, 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 a free consultation where you come in and we talk for an hour. No, this is, if it's one visit, two visits, three visits, whatever it takes to complete this plan for you so that you have the information you need, that's what I'm going to do for you. So again, first 10 callers, 615-376-5325. Debbie standing by, she'll get your information, she'll send out a little checklist of things to bring to your appointment so we can do all this for you and get the most, for, you know, the most out of this for you. In addition, when you come in, I'll get you a copy of my book, Seven Steps to Financial Freedom in Retirement. In fact, if you'd like to read it in advance, we'll even send it out to you in advance, okay? And it's going to cover a lot of the different things that I've just been laying out for you, but we're going to go into more depth and we're going to be talking about your individual situation in doing so. All right, now here's something else to consider. So we know, in fact, that we've talked about negative correlation and the importance of that. So again, to explain negative correlation simply means that you put two asset categories like stocks and bonds together, and they tend to, when the stocks are up, bonds are down and vice versa. Okay, that's, that's basically all that means. So that smooths out the volatility. Here's a great example of that. Think in terms, if I own two stocks, all right, for example, like let's say I own airline stocks and I own oil stocks. What happens when price of oil goes up? My stock price for oil goes up, doesn't it? But what happens with airlines, which uh, dependent on fuel, all right, they're going to have a negative impact there. The cost of fuel went up, that reduces their profitability or their prices are going to have to go up or whatever it is, and their price is going to go down. But if I own both stocks, if I own airline and I own oil together, when one's up and the other's down, I'm smoothing out, I'm getting that desired rate of return and I'm smoothing out the volatility because I've got, I'm not just having everything down at the same time or everything up at the same time. Does that make sense? All right, that's called negative correlation. All right, we do this one on the stock bond side, but then we look deeper of the stocks, and this goes back to Dr. Fama's formula, which asset categories actually give us that negative correlation? Well, what he's determined is basically small companies and large companies tend to move that way. We also find that growth companies and value companies have that negative correlation, and international and domestic companies have that correlation. So, but now comes the other part. There's certain percentages. It's like a recipe, right? We've got to just get the, just the right amount of each of those to make sure that's going to work, and then we've got to maintain it, and that's called rebalancing. And that needs to be done at least once a year in a portfolio to make sure that it doesn't get all out of whack and then it's not going to do the things we expect, which is keep that volatility down while getting that desired rate of return. And we know how to put the investment plan together once we've determined your needed rate of return based on attaining that goal. All right? And then, of course, we still want to know about your risk tolerance. So when we determine here's the plan, are you going to be comfortable with that plan? All right. Are there some ways that we can help get re increase your comfort level while, by reducing risk even further? Maybe even giving you some guarantees, as I talk about in Chapter Four. We're going to talk about that as soon as we come back. So join us here. We'll be right back on the Retirement Report.